Well, this is Radio TV Phono Nut, and we have torn apart a an RCA Victor Kitty record player from 1967. I've already lubricated the mechanism and all of that, and replaced the cartridge, and overhauled the amplifier. The original cartridge was a three volt static 146 mono cartridge and of course it was dead as a doornail like most of them are by now well they no longer make those so I had to install a standard issue Varco TN4B stereo cartridge that's wired for mono and the problem is it only puts out a half a volt and the result is not very much amplification We have to turn the volume all the way up to get any kind of usable output. And it's even worse on an LP that has lower levels of modulation on it than many of these old 45s. Now in the past, we've dealt with this by adding an extra tube to the chassis. Well, a little problem here. This unit here is not a, not a vacuum tube unit. And it's not built on a metal chassis, it's on a printed circuit board, so it's not very conducive to drilling holes on the chassis and adding a tube socket. So, we'll have to do something else. A while back, our, our good friend Jordan, who works at an audio repair shop in California, he specializes in vintage electronics repair, You've probably seen his YouTube videos, but anyway, he posted a video of a little vacuum tube RCA record player that's a little older than this one. Uses a used a single 25L6 output tube, and rather than add an extra tube to the chassis, he added one of these German preamplifier modules that he ordered from Parts Express. In fact, I'll I'll post a link to his video and. The description. In fact, his video is what inspired me to order this little preamp module. Now, me personally, on the vacuum tube sets that use a metal chassis, I'm probably just going to keep doing the tube modification like I've done in the past. But if it's a solid state unit like this, or a vacuum tube unit that's on a printed circuit board or a vacuum tube unit where the chassis is not big enough to add an extra tube socket then I'll go with something like this here's our preamp module as you can see it's not very big at all and it should be no problem to mount it somewhere inside the record player here's our various connection diagrams we we'll want to use this one right here for our purpose and before we get carried away with installing this, we need to look at the specifications. First, our DC operating voltage. This will operate safely from 9 to 24 volts. Our B plus voltage for the record player is about 23 volts. I measured it last night. Could probably go directly with that, but I'm probably going to add a dropping resistor just to get it a little lower. I don't like running things on the maximum edge. Now let's look at our other specifications. And yes, I had to look to find the English printing on here. That's about par for the course this day and time. Operating voltage 9 to 24 volts. We've already gone over that. Uh, frequency range approximately 20 to 20,000 hertz. That's plenty enough for what we're doing. This little kitty record player is not even capable of reproducing a frequency spec frequency spectrum that broad. Input voltage, and here's where it gets a little interesting. Approximately two to fifty millivolts. Well, this cartridge has an output of one half volt, so that's way too much. It would overdrive the input of the preamp module big time. And if you'll notice on Jordan's video, he has a, I believe he has a 4.7k ohm resistor connected across the cartridge. 
That's to load the output of the cartridge down so it won't overdrive the preamp input. Output voltage approximately 0.2 to 0.5 volts and that should be enough boost to, to drive our amplifier and the record player. Input impedance approximately 50,000 ohms. That could present another problem because these ceramic cartridges in these record players, they generally want to see a high impedance input on the order of 500k to 1 mega ohm or, or better. So we might we might lack some treble response here, or excuse me, we might lack some bass response. If you've ever plugged a ceramic cartridge equipped turntable into the auxiliary input of a stereo receiver, you'll sometimes notice that the bass response is lacking and that's because the auxiliary input of most receivers is a lower impedance and like I said a cartridge, ceramic cartridge wants to see a high impedance but there again that probably won't be a big deal with this kitty record player because I doubt it had too much bass in the first place whenever it was new and Output impedance, approximately less than 1K ohm, yeah, shouldn't be a big deal. Current consumption, less than 2 milliampere, that's no big deal. We can run that directly off of the power supply and the record player without any ill effects. So, let me get all this wired up and I'll be back in a moment and we'll hear what the results are. Okay, we're making progress, and I'll give you a little tip right now. Don't try to cut corners in the power supply area. I thought that since this, that I could just simply use a dropping resistor to drop the uh, DC voltage from the power supply and the phonograph down to a suitable level. Nope, it won't work. It, it misbehaves badly. This preamplifier module wants to see a nice, clean, solid, regulated voltage that does not fluctuate based on load, etc. Well, it won't be any problem to build a little voltage regulator, but I don't have any LM317Ts or anything like that. Well, I probably have some, I just can't find them, so I'm using the regulated output of my little battery eliminator here. It's set to 12 volts. And see, that works much better. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate what happens when when a particular device is not happy with unregulated power supply voltage. And mind you, I've still got to tweak the cartridge loading circuitry a little bit, but we'll worry about that later. This is this is the preamp with regulated voltage. And as you can hear, it's not missing a beat. Okay, this is what I got lazy and attempted to do. This red wire here is our 22 volt, 23 volt, 24 volt, whatever, B plus coming from the power supply of the record player, 24 volts DC, we'll say, coming down here to this dropping resistor, because I think I mentioned earlier that I don't like running stuff to its design limits. This dropping resistor drops it down to about 12 volts and this is our B plus input to the preamp module on the other side of this resistor. Now let me show you what's happening here. Okay I have it hooked back up the lazy way. I have our DC voltmeter connected to the B plus input of the preamp module I'm going to switch on the power on the phonograph. I want you to watch the meter.
see we're up to about 11.8 volts I have the volume about halfway up now I'm going to place the tone arm on the record you notice the voltage fluctuating And you can also hear the audio cutting in and out. Now, I know that voltage fluctuation doesn't seem like much, but in the world of modern solid-state circuits, a little bit can throw the whole thing off. And I, I should have known that before I tried to take the easy way out here. Uh, I work on so much tube stuff that'll that'll often function perfectly with voltage fluctuations of plus or minus 10,000 percent that I often forget about that these modern solid-state circuits often need a very clean and very stable uh, regulated B plus voltage so we will obtain an appropriate voltage regulator and we will construct a more precise power supply that will make this preamp module happy okay we finally got it working to some degree of acceptance. It turns out it was more fussy over uh, ripple than it was poor regulation because when I added an additional filter capacitor to the B plus input of the module it started behaving. So here's what we what we did. We uh, we connected our tone arm output of the cartridge to the signal input of the module we connected the signal output of the module via this piece of shielded audio cable to where the cartridge originally connected to the original amplifier chassis and then we ran a red wire from our B plus output for the amplifier which is about 23 volts over to here and then we connected a resistor between there and in this case the resistor is a 6.8 K ohm that's to drop the 23 volts down to about 12 volts and here's our B plus input to the module our ground connection of the module it's the common ground for our signal input output and power supply so we just ground that to our ground reference on the main chassis here now as far as our tone arm compensation, our signal compensation from the tone arm, uh, Jordan I believe used a 4.7 K ohm resistor across the cartridge. Well in this particular ap application the sound was much 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 too bright, in fact it hurt my ears to listen to it. So we have a 0 .02 microfarad capacitor shunted across the cartridge. Actually, in this case, I have two 0 0.01 microfarad capacitors wired in parallel because, once again, I'm getting tired of looking at this thing and I'm getting lazy. So, But that's just a personal preference. You know, you'll have to decide what resistor or capacitor combination sounds best for the particular record player that you're working on. And like I said earlier, if, if had this been a tube unit, it would have gotten the standard 12AV6 modification, or 6AV6. But obviously on this type of unit, we can't add an extra tube, so we have to make do with what we've got. And I'm not paying $60 for another 3-volt uh, static cartridge like what goes in here. <coughs> Here we are back together. It's plenty loud enough and it actually has a little bass. Now I'm still detecting a little bit of distortion, but that might be this amplifier because I was detecting a little bit of distortion before I made the modification and I really can't find anything wrong with the amp that would be causing that so it's just the way it is these types of players were not exactly high fidelity
But it's not perfect, but it is what what it is. Sometimes you have to just do the best you can with something. Okay, that's about all I've got for this. Hope you got some inf good information out of this. And more to come later.